sulfur. <laughs> well, don't let it fool you. 58 of 250 laps have been completed. That would be a big, big win for Andy Houston if he could come on his 100th race and win this one. Mike Dolan pulls the pace truck into the infield. Jack Sprague continues to lead. He's led all of the laps here so far. Tina Gordon, the last truck on the inside. That's the one female on the track that Jack Sprague has not spun so far. We're pretty close to her right now, but uh, I'm sure he's going to get a great start here. He does. He will clear Tina by the time he gets to turn one. So Jack Sprague and Bobby Hamilton one and two as they go down the back stretch. Dennis Sester, Ted Musgrave, and Steve Clark rounding out the top five. You know, Ray told us that Andy Houston is planning on making this move. Andy's way high in turn four. You see Andy go by right there, that shot. Lost a number of positions. Mike Skinner dicing through traffic right now on the inside of Jeff Brigledine. Problems with the two. As we were just talking about Andy Houston, he is slowing and off the pace. We will have to find out what is going on with the team ASC Clark West Dodge. He went way high the last time for turns three and four, so he may have a lot of the debris on his tires. And it takes a couple laps for these trucks to get that stuff off the tires, but if he doesn't have a flat tire, so tough, tough break for Andy Houston. Trying to keep pace with the 17 of David Rudiman just in front of him. That MTN bearings number 17 for Toyota coming in. David Rudiman's done a great job. Currently has, he's tied in third in the points with Dennis Sensor. One of only two drivers to be in the top 10 in each and every race this season of the three races we've had thus far. A great third place finish and a pole at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The first time the truck series ever ran Atlanta. You know, you would think we would come to a new racetrack like this that would put everybody on equal footing. And it does, but look at look at who we have up front. We've got Jack Spray, Bobby Hamilton, Dennis Setzer, Ted Musgrave. So <laughs> the cream always rises to the top. Bobby Hamilton looks as though he's getting a little bit anxious, maybe to lead a few laps in Mansfield. We heard Ray Dunlap tell us that Andy Houston was going to a one pit stop race. Well, that's because it, it appears that it's so difficult to pass here. You know, Travis Quapple was one of the trucks that, one of the only good trucks that pitted on that last caution flag, and he had already moved his way up into the 13th position from starting way back in, in 31st. But he's obviously going to have a two-stop race because he's going to come in again another 100 laps or something like that. But it was, so it surprised me a little bit that Travis was, was one of the trucks that stopped so early since he was so good, but his, his progression had probably stalled when he got to 13th. The farther up you go, the better trucks you get to, and the harder it is to pass them. And I talked to Travis just after practice, and he was very pleased with his truck. He thought his truck was running very well. As a matter of fact, Alex Meskin, the owner of Bang Racing, and those two trucks, the 24 of Travis Waffle and the 42 of Mike Skinner, said that they were looking at Travis's truck because Mike Skinner seemed like he would just lay off, and they had to figure out some way to get Mike Skinner caught up to where Travis was at. Well, that's such an advantage. Ooh, trouble over in turn three. Big crash, Tina Gordon, Terry McDonald, and it looks like the Goodyear 59 of Mark McFarland involved in that as well. Mark McFarland in the Goodyear 59 was the, wall, was the truck on the inside wall. That's Tina Gordon in the Vassaret Microtel Inn and Suites 13. It looks like a little bit right front damage to the 59 of Mark McFarland. Let's take a look at what happened. See them entering turn number three right here. Tina was way high on the racetrack and got a little bit loose, got sideways, and that just bottled up the field in front of them. You saw David Rudum in the 17 truck try to go between Terry and Tina, and Mark McFarland was against the inside wall there. See Tina on the outside of the racetrack in that orange truck. She turned sideways right in front of David Rudiman. And actually, I wonder if there was something down there on the racetrack because Terry McDonald turned sideways at the same time on the bottom of the racetrack. Caution number four has come out at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. We've completed 70 laps of racing of 250, and it's already been very exciting. Jack Sprague's up front. We'll come back. Watch racing. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series UAW GM Ohio 250 
live on speed. As Ray Dunlap mentioned, before the race even started, there could be a few crashes in this race, and we've seen four so far. This is our fourth caution as you see the work being done on the Team ASC CarQuest Dodge of Andy Houston. We talked to how he backed up. Ray, what's going on? Well, Rick, like I told you, they did uh, take a half a pound or put a half a pound in the right rear, also went up on the track bar. What Andy had been saying there earlier was the fact that the truck just would not turn. It wanted to go straight every time it got to the center of the corner. So we're going to take a look at the tires down here in just a second, see if there was any problem. But so far, he said that uh, he couldn't get her to turn. So this caution was a big break for Andy Houston. We saw Andy come back in and put left side tires and he actually made, has made two pit stops on this caution flag. And several of the crew members were looking underneath the truck like they thought maybe something had, had broken or sometimes we talked earlier about a collapsed spring. When you collapse the spring, then, then the truck will, the handling will go completely out the window. So I know they were looking for some problem maybe underneath the, the bottom of that uh, Team ASC CarQuest Dodge. The set or the 48 of Kevin Dowler making his first NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series start will get the free pass. He was the highest one lap down vehicle. Kevin Dowler making his pass around now. He goes by Mike Dolan in the pace truck. Catch up to the back of the field. Rick Crawford currently in seventh position. Started in seventh. Hasn't moved around a lot. David Starr, the Spirit Manufacturer in Chevrolet, right in front of him. David started back in the 10th position, so he's made a couple moves up towards the front. Uh, Steve Park was able to get by Ted Musgrave for the fourth position right before we went, right before that caution flag came out. So a great run by the Orleans Dodge with Steve Park. Jack Sprague, as we mentioned, out in front. Green flag will fly for Sprague. And we're back to racing in Mansfield. The sun is beginning to come out over this track. The 20,000 plus that are here in attendance are very appreciative of that. A little bit cooler the past two days in Ohio. We had great weather here Friday for the practice day, so when the sun coming out, it's going to warm up a little bit, and it'll be more reminiscent of how these drivers saw this track on Friday. Riding on board with Mike Skinner, that Toyota Tundra. Currently in 11th position, just behind him, Brandon Witt, the number 38. Such a competitive season here. This is, we have by far more good trucks in the Craftsman Truck Series this season than they have in the entire history of this series. Bobby Hamilton continues to try to make that move on the bottom of the racetrack on Jack Sprague and just cannot quite pull it off. There he goes again. Look at him. Tried to drive underneath him in the center of the corner. It's a little bit easier to do it off a of turn four. That's turn two right there. Now they're entering turn three. Bobby has a little more luck driving up beside him off a of turn four, but still not quite enough to be able to make the pass. Now, as far as Jack Sprague's plan for this race, do you think that he sat down with Chris Showalter and Dave Hughes and said, all right, let's try to do this on one stop? I think so. And a lot of times you let the racetrack, the race dictate what you're going to do. If Jack Sprague was not able to hold problems with the 08 of Ken Weaver to get spun around in turn number two, that's the third truck we've seen spin in turn two. And so Ken Weaver brings out caution number five with the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Getting back to Jack Sprague, if this was a situation where his truck handling wasn't exactly right, then I think he would probably have to stop and may have already stopped. But he obviously he has a great truck. I think Bobby Hampton right now has a little bit better truck because he's able to drive up beside him. If Bobby was in front had clean air i think he may be able to drive away a little bit but right now jack sprague's done a great job has not made any mistakes and has led every every lap of the 81 we've run so far well, let's take a look at why we're under caution number five get mike dolan or bring in the pace truck the 08 of ken weaver spinning there looks like chad chaff on the 18 dickey dodge might have made some contact with ken weaver Chapman was fastest this morning in practice, and his team owner, Bobby Hamilton, was second fastest, as we had talked about in that practice earlier this morning. And in the philosophy starting up front, like a Jack Sprague or a Bobby Hamilton, has to be different than, obviously, a Mike Skinner or a Travis Quaffle starting in the back of the field. Well, that's exactly right, but that's what surprised me about Travis Quaffle stopping, because he stayed out long enough to get all the way from back starting 31st 
up until the top 15. So that surprised me that he stopped that early after he'd passed so many trucks. What do you have down there, Ray Dunlap? Well, Phil, the pits weren't open that last time by, so Jack Craig had to stay out. Everybody on the radio so far has said, if Craig comes, we're coming, and that looks like it's what's happening. You see that the 16 is coming down. We also see that Setzer and Bobby Hamilton, those guys are coming in. So as they go to the back pits, let's check in with Wendy. Well, we were waiting also to see what the 62 was doing. They said, we're going to follow the leader. So you see they pull into the pit. He said we were a little loose early on, but the truck has been fairly decent for him. Johnny Allen was just waiting to see what the sun was going to do. You heard Phil Parsons talking about that. Johnny Allen was on the same page with you, Phil. He said he didn't want it to get it too tight, so they're not making any adjustments. Let's go to Ray Dunlap. Well, Wendy Sprague gets his Chevy, Chevy Silverado here. They started out on set number four of tires. They're putting on set number three. They wanted to take one pound out of the left side. Sprague was just a little bit tight off, but so far he's in the He will be the first off pit road, then Hamilton, then Setzer, just the way they came in. Ray mentioned set four, set three. A lot of trucks during practice this morning tried to get all of their sets of tires scuffed. Jack Sprague was different. They didn't want to scuff any of them. That's right. Bobby Hamilton did not scuff all his tires either because they they felt like the tires have been extremely consistent throughout this whole week. Again, they tried several sets on Friday, and they had a lot of consistency. Some of the other teams have felt like they did not have the consistency that they were looking for, that their truck would actually change a little bit from set to set. So that's why they scuffed their tires, and so they knew in advance if the truck was going to change when they changed tires. And so Jack Sprague has led 82 of the laps in Mansfield so far. They have a great stop. And that team enjoying it. We'll be back with more racing. Welcome back. Three laps of green have been run since we went away. Ted Musgrave, Brad Keselowski did not come in and sit as we would have thought everyone would have followed the leader. It's almost half and half. I was writing down the trucks that were pitting, and there were just as many trucks with that stayed on the racetrack. What a great battle here. Bobby Hamilton, again, Jack Sprague, Bobby Hamilton came in the pits one, two. They came out of pits together, but they're all the way back right now in the 13th and the 14th position. Jack Sprague looks, looks as though he was making a little room for himself as he went by the aid of Chase Montgomery. Mike Skinner right there, we're riding with him. Looks like we've got uh, Dennis Setzer right in front of him, the Silverado Chevrolet. Dennis trying to get by Chase Montgomery as well. And look at how close Bobby Hamilton was to Jack Sprague. Whoa, contact right there. Speaking of close, Dennis and Chase Montgomery got together coming off that corner. Dennis saying to Chase, hey, I'm over here? Or does Chase know it pretty well that Dennis is over there? Oh, Chase knew it, but and Dennis did not mean to hit him. That was just an inadvertent little shot right there. But uh, Dennis was able to make the pass on Chase Montgomery. Again, it's not real easy for these drivers to make the pass on the bottom of the racetrack. He's, look at Bobby Hamilton. Look how far down he's going on the racetrack. They're both able to get by David Rudum in the 17 truck right now. See, Bobby now moves David a little bit up higher out of the way for Bobby to use that banking. He needs to use that banking to get his truck turned and get in the throttle and get off the corner. Now Dennis is going to try to drive by David Rudum on the bottom of the racetrack, and they make some contact. Side by side as they go past the start-finish line, Dennis Setzer getting by the 17 of David Rudum. And Ken Weaver very hard into the wall in turn number two, backs it in as you see the damage to the back of the 08. See Shelby Howard, the 23 truck. He was involved along with Tracy Hines in the 88 truck. There's Tracy Hines, obviously a flat left front tire on the, on the 88 of Tracy Hines. This is another truck that several crew chiefs and drivers in the garage area this morning said, that 88 truck is really, really good. He is one of the guys to watch. Now, the mystery of do I pit, do I not pit, does Ted Musgrave have to come in now and Brad Keselowski and some of the others that didn't come in earlier? They certainly don't have to. These drivers can go at least 150, 60 laps before they need to stop for fuel. What do you have down there, Ray? Just that, Phil, as we were wondering why Ted Musgrave might decide to stay out. He is 13th in points coming into this race. Remember, he finished 26th at Daytona, so I asked his crew chief, Sean Parker, why did you not pit? 
He said, I don't want to get tore up back there in the back. We can go a long way on fuel. We want to see if this race has some more attrition. We like leading. We like being out front. He said, we can go 150, 160 laps before we need to pit, so we're staying out. Yeah, I think Sean and Ted Musgrave, but obviously now they've made this a one pit stop race. If they're going to stay out here, we're at lap 100. They need to go about 50, 60 more laps. Then they make their pit stop. They have fresh tires, and then they're good to go to the end. John Parker talking philosophy right now, probably with Ted Musgrave. We'll be back. More from Mansfield. Race 5 of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series comes to you from Lowe's Motor Speedway, Charlotte, North Carolina, on Friday at 8.30 p.m. Speed Channel will be there to cover the race from start to finish as the trucks kick off NASCAR's battle in their own backyard. Tough trucks, tough racing. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed Channel. Hey, Speed Channel fans, or maybe they just wanted to get on TV and knew that if they put a Speed Channel banner together, they'd get on. Spectacular crowd in Mansfield, Ohio. Like we mentioned earlier, over 20,000 sold this event out over weeks ago. And Ted Musgrave again takes the green for Dennis James. You know, the Ohio area is a tremendous racing area. I, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, just about 50 miles north of Ohio. I used to go to Toledo Speedway every Sunday night, but they've had so many races here. Sandusky Speedway, Jaren Speedway. Uh, Springfield, Ohio used to have a racetrack on, on the dirt and uh, just a tremendous area. And when you go to a lot of the race, our races down south, you see a lot of license plates in the parking lot from Ohio. And Pitt, Ohio is just down the road and it's, you know, it's a great facility. How about that red number 29 truck right there? Brad Keselowski, second ever NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. Doing a terrific job. He's one of the trucks that stayed out like Ted Musgrave, like Jeffrey Bodine. But what a tremendous job. What a great family, from also from the Michigan area. Ray, what do you have down there? Well, Phil, same story as Ted Musgrave. They said they wanted to stay out till like lap 129, 140, something like that, for the number 29 truck. Remember, Brad is only 20 years old. Today he's driving a truck they call Super Droop. They ran it at Martinsville, but he tore the sides off it when he left Pitt Road. They've done an awful lot of work to get this truck back together, and he's doing an excellent job in his second start. But they're going to go to like one between 130, 140, something like that at least, before they pit. He's hanging right in there with Ted Musgrave, so he's learning a lot right now. That's what Brad needs to do. He needs to follow these drivers like Ted Musgrave and learn from them so he's able to run this truck up front like he's doing right now. There's Terry Cook. He's having a great run. He's in the fourth position. Now, Terry is one of the drivers that has stopped for a pit stop. Wendy, how about Terry Cook? Yeah, Phil, you were talking about Ohio native Terry Cook. Just down the road, two hours in Sylvania, Ohio. So he's looking to put on a good, good run for his hometown truck. They pit on lap 53, that first round of pit stops. They did not make any changes. They only took four tires and fuel. Said the truck is handling it real well. We just saw Jack Spring backing up as Bobby Hamilton and Dennis Setzer went by. Take a look back at that pass. We got C's up right there. Jack got it in the back of Travis Quapple, the 24 truck. Now they're going to go down in turn number one. Jack got a little sideways. bit sideways, got in the back of the 18 truck, and Bobby Hamilton and Dennis Setzer able to drive by on the inside. That's the first time Jack Sprague has been passed all afternoon. Caution comes out again at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. Debris on the track this time. It looks like possibly, I see the name Goodyear. Mark McFarland, number 59, had some problems earlier. Look at that Dodge Dickey. That's Chad Chapman. He was the one that Jack ran in the back of. That's obviously somebody stopped, it looks like, in front of Chad Chapman. Let's take another look and see what happened here. There's Chad, the blue truck right there, right in the middle, middle of your screen. See Matt checks Crafton, he, Hank Parker checks up because he and Matt Crafton made contact. That's when Travis ran in the back of Chad Chapman and then Jack ran in the back of Travis. Started chain reaction. Some of the fiberglass from the, probably the nose piece off of Chad Chapman's truck. Take a look at the onboard with Dennis Setzer. 
get sideways there. That's after they'd already made the contact coming off turn number four. When they get down to turn number one, Jack got sideways, ran in the back of Chad Chaffin, and then Bobby and Dennis were able to drive by on the inside. So that Dickies Dodge coming in to have some work done. Ray? Rick, they were worried that uh, they had busted the radiator, but Chad says the water temperature is holding, so he thought maybe they didn't. They're going to try to put the hood down there, pull off some of this uh, front grill, and see if they can get back out. They don't know. I don't see any water pouring out so far, so they're talking about it here on the radio, whether or not they need to go. Yes, and they do need to go behind the wall, is what they said. Now, as far as the two truck, the number two of Andy Houston, they have decided that they think he has a bad right front shock on that thing. I told you earlier that his thing just wouldn't turn. Dennis Conner, his crew chief, originally thought that they had broken an axle, but now they've decided that it is a broken right front shock, so he's in the pit, and he'll lose a number of laps here. Well, the 100th start for Andy Houston, not a good one. As the team ASD CarQuest Dodge having problems. Yeah, we, that pass we saw Jack Spray get passed by Bobby Hamilton, Dennis Spitzer right there. That could be have severe ramifications for Jack Sprague at the end of this race because as much as Bobby Hamilton has tried to get by him, he's not been able to. So that could be a race-winning pass. And welcome back. We'd like to welcome our men and women in uniform serving around the world and watching today's race on AFN, the American Forces Network. We thank you for all that you do. We hope you're enjoying today's telecast wherever you are stationed. And remember, America stands behind you every step of the way. You know, we talk about Bobby Hamilton, Dennis Setzer getting by Jack Sprague. Travis Quapple is in the seventh position, and he only pitted 10 laps before a lot of these other drivers, so he's in great position right now, but he's had a lot of damage to the front of his truck. He's right there behind Hank Parker. Look at all the damage to the front of that Showtime Toyota. He may have heating problems because it looks like the front end is completely closed off. Well, Phil, remember last year, he missed one lap of the entire season last year. So that truck very rarely looked like that with Travis driving. He's had 25 consecutive lead lap finishes coming into this race at Mansfield, Ohio. 25 in a row. Amazing. Green flag flies again. Still out in front. The one of Ted Musgrave. Terry Cook, the 10 truck, has moved into third position. Carl Edwards in fourth right now. Matt Kraft is in fifth. The great trucks are moving their way towards the front again. Well, if you think about that, Carl Edwards in fourth started at the back of the field because of another engine change. He was he was a thousand, he was batting a thousand for engine change and wins before Martinsville, but because they changed the motor in Martinsville and didn't win, his percentage has gone down a little bit, but not too much. He pitted on lap 71 along with Travis Quapple, so they're on the exact same pit sequence, pit sequence part right now, and he's two, three positions ahead of Travis Quapple. Now, how much will that damage to Travis Quapple's front end, will that affect his handling of the truck? Fortunately, this is one of the slower racetracks that, that we run, even though it's a very fast half a uh, fast short half mile but it looks like that may damage the front of his front downforce as we see bobby hamilton right now driving up beside him so this could be a big pass right here for bobby hamilton i think travis waffle's truck is definitely crippled because of the damage to the front of that truck he was complaining about being tight earlier he's going to be nothing but tighter yet now with all that damage to the front of his truck so early on in this race as we're coming up on the halfway point, Bobby Hamilton seems to have the truck to beat, the fastest truck out on the track, and he currently sits in sixth position, as there are a few trucks in front of him that have not hit it yet. A good shot of Dennis Setzer trying to make his way, his way by Travis Quapple. There's Jack Sprague, the 16th truck, right behind Dennis, and the Silverado Chevrolet on the inside. See, see the gap right there. Bobby Hamilton was able to drive away from Travis Quapple once he got by him. So Travis is definitely crippled right now, not able to maintain the speed that he was earlier in the race. And you mentioned this being a, a fairly fast short track. 
we have to tell folks that they're going upwards of 96, 97 miles an hour averaging around this track. Probably, probably 115, 120 miles an hour on the straightaway. And as we saw earlier in the track description, the straightaway is only 500 and some feet long, and these trucks are getting up to probably 120 miles an hour. Side by side, Jack Sprague. Oh! Chase Montgomery on the inside of Jack Sprague. They make contact, and Sprague again sideways through one and two. Now you see Mike Skinner moving up past Chase Montgomery, and he keeps his sights set on the 16 of Jack Sprague. Looks like Mike able to make the pass right there. You see Brad Keselowski, the 29 truck, losing a couple positions. Terry Cook, the 10, and here comes Bobby Hamilton, the square D Dodge, looking back on the bottom of the racetrack where he's been trying to work so often, wasn't able to do it to the Jack Sprague until Jack Sprague got into trouble. Ray Dunlap. Hey, Phil, keep in mind, Bobby Hamilton has led all three races so far this year, just one of two drivers to do it. And um, he has said on the radio, I really need to get to the front. His crew chief, Danny Rollins, told him, don't worry about it because all those guys in front of you have got the pick coming up. But it looks like Hamilton is on the move, trying to pick away there at the 10 and the number one. Wendy? finish at Daytona. You know, what's big, we talked about Carl Edwards being in front of Bobby Hamilton. Well, not anymore. Bobby Hamilton was able to get by Carl Edwards. Let's see right now. Bobby's going to drive to the outside. Carl trying to get by Terry Cook. Cannot quite get the adhesion on the bottom of the racetrack. Bobby uses the outside, which he's so used so infrequently this entire race and able to make the pass on Carl Edwards. Bobby Hamilton is the truck to beat. Terry Cook trying to get by Ted Musgrave about a lap ago as Terry Cook is able to run a little bit lower line than Ted Musgrave and Bobby Hamilton is able to run a little bit lower line than Terry Cook even runs. You know I'm not sure I agree with Danny Rollins. Terry Cook pitted back on lap number 52. He can probably go 200 laps with as many caution flags as we have had so I'm not sure. Whoa! Contact there. Bobby Hamilton and Terry Cook. Look at Terry still trying to maintain control. Looks like there might be problems with the number 10 as he cannot hold on to that number 10 going through the corner. He and Bobby got together coming off turn or going in turn number one there. Really made some hard contact. And look who's chasing right behind. That is Carl Edwards in the Super Chips 99 just waiting for his opportunity to get out front. And this is short track racing for the NASCAR Craft Constructors. We see this every time we go to a short track. That's why 20,000 people sold this race out several weeks ago, because they knew this was the kind of racing we were going to see here at Mansfield. Here comes Bobby Hamilton on the inside. Terry Cook. Terry Cook closes the door as they go through the corner. Bobby Hamilton, one of the only trucks to run on the inside of that dark line on the low side of the track. Here's what happened moments ago between Bobby Hamilton and Terry Cook. You see him go down in turn number one here. Here they are, right there. Terry's on the inside of Ted Musgrave. Bobby trying to go on the outside. Terry's going to try to get by the lap truck of Terry McDonald on 72. They make hard contact. Look at Terry completely sideways driving into turn number one and never lost that position to Bobby Hamilton. And, and we're talking about how aggressive Bobby Hamilton seems to be. Is he pushing too hard with the understanding that the guys in front of him have to pit? I'm not sure the 10 truck's going to pit again. Remember, he pitted on lap 52. He's driving a Robert Yates-powered Ford. Fords typically get a little better fuel mileage. We've had so many caution laps. There's Bobby Hamilton able to make the pass right now, so it's a moot point as far as Bobby Hamilton is concerned. But I'm not sure the chase is going to pit again. And how about Bobby Hamilton? Does he need to pit anymore? Bobby Hamilton does not need to pit. Does not need to pit any go anymore. He's been on lap 82. We know he can run 168 laps 
Stewart with the caution flags that we've had. Now he's going to take the lead, and he may drive away from this field. Dodges side by side. Coming out of turn number four, Bobby Hamilton will take the lead, and he is our third different leader in Mansfield. Perry Cook going to follow Bobby Hamilton by. He's able to get by Ted Musgrave, as does Dennis Setzer. Now Carl Edwards trying to make the pass. Carl Edwards with a strong truck. And again, we talked about the engine changes for that Roush team has been very beneficial for them. Carl Edwards started the back of the field, and he's working his way up. We'll see if Carl Edwards is going to be able to get up and challenge Bobby Hamilton for the lead. 